Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. I'm ready. U.S. Army Recruiting Command, this is Mission Control Houston. Please, Houston. Please call Station 4 voice check. Please call Station 4 voice check. Brigadier General Patrick McKayless. Command, how do you hear me? General Michaelis, I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Oh, what a great day. Good morning, Colonel Morgan. We are excited to connect with you from Space Center Houston. We got 25 future U.S. soldiers here in the audience, full of family, friends, and veterans and supporters, as well as your former or your fellow Army astronaut, Lieutenant Colonel Frank Rubio, and your lovely wife, Stacy. We also have more than 150 locations from coast to coast tuning in with nearly 1,000 future service members ready to be part of the first ever nationwide Oath of Enlistment historic event with you. Before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? General Michaelis, thank you so much. It's really a great honor for me to administer the oaths of enlistment today from this magnificent spaceship, the ISS. And I'd like to tell you just a little bit about it. The ISS is now in its 20th year of continuous occupation by astronauts and cosmonauts from all over the world. We're a crew of three right now. A couple weeks ago, we were a crew of six. And a couple months before that, we even had as many as nine on board. We're in orbit 250 miles above the Earth and traveling at over 17,000 miles an hour, which means that we make a trip around the Earth every 90 minutes. And I just checked, we were out over the Pacific Ocean. By the end of this conversation we're having today, I'll be over the United States. It will make 16 orbits of the Earth in a single day. Over the course of my time up here, our crew will conduct nearly 300 different science experiments. We maintain the space station. We've done multiple spacewalks. But before I took this nine-month journey to space as an astronaut, I was a soldier First, I made the decision when I was 18 years old to raise my right hand, just like you're about to. I am still a soldier. I'm just serving in space on the ultimate high ground. I'm here as a direct result of the incredible opportunities I had in the Army, and I'm a soldier through and through. Oh, that's fascinating. That is awesome. That is awesome. Today marks the first day of the rest of your lives, and you will forever be changed by your decision to serve your country. And General Michaelis, if And ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the future military members in the room as I administer the oath of enlistment. These service members from across the nation are enlisting and affirming their commitment to serve in the United States Army, the Army Reserve, and other branches of the armed services. Future soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I. State your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the orders of the officers appointed over me. according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God.
congratulations to our future soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. Let's give an enormous round of applause to these great Americans who have answered the call of duty to serve our great nation. Colonel Morgan, I think that um in the 30 years that I've had in service, that's probably the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And I thank you very much for that. So we've got a series of questions for you uh, in your time that you're up there. So the first question, I'd like to invite future soldier Amber Cabina, a fellow Texas A&M graduate, to ask her question. So if you had to bring one friend on this mission, who would it be and why? Well, that's a tough question, but I, I'm going to have to tell you that the crewmates that I've flown with are exactly the people that I would want to fly with again. I had the unique opportunity. Of, I was selected in 2013 with seven other great Americans, and by a rare coincidence, I got to fly with three other of my classmates uh, that were selected my same year. At one point, there were four from my class all on the space station at the same time, and all of my classmates and all the astronauts that I serve with are wonderful people and I would fly with any one of them again. They are, they're wonderful people. I really, really can't say enough. Thank you. Okay, our next question. Future soldier Lindsay Alexander from Lake Brantley High School in Alamante Springs, Florida asks, with all your experiences in the United States Army and as an astronaut, you've obviously had a lot of difficult tasks and had to overcome numerous obstacles throughout your illustrious career. Which would you say was the most difficult? And in what ways did you overcome obstacles so that we, as future soldiers, can take those lessons learned with us into our careers? You know, it'd be hard to identify just one. I think it's been a lot of little obstacles all along the way. And I would say that especially to soldiers, sailors, uh, airmen and marines that are getting ready to go off to boot camp. All things that are worth doing are hard. And as you set off on this journey, you will at some time hear that voice in your head that tells you, maybe this isn't for you. Hey, you should quit now. There's so many other more comfortable ways to go about life than this. And that is your signal that what you're doing is worth doing. And you will hear that, and you just you need to suppress that and drive on. I experienced that multiple times in my career, and it and it's turned out to be extremely rewarding. I can't stress that enough. Things that are worth doing are difficult. So the next question for you, future soldier Ryan Rumkey from Hamilton, Ohio asks, what are the qualifications for becoming an astronaut? Well, we got to review that just recently because we've made, recently made an announcement that we're going to select another class uh, here in about 18 months. And the announcement will go out here shortly in the next couple of days, or the, window, or the announcement's gone out and the, the window is open. Um, it requires a STEM background, uh, science uh, or an engineering degree at uh, the master's degree level. So, you know, if, that is your, if that's your goal, then pursuing your education is the most important thing. And r the qualifications for being, astronaut, being an astronaut are not much beyond that. Uh, they're bare minimum qualifications because we need people from all sorts of different backgrounds. Okay. Sir, next question for you. Future soldier Cody Kolar from Cal Allen High School in Corpus Christi, Texas asks, why did you choose the Army over the other branches? Well, probably a lot like many of the future soldiers and sailors, airmen, marines in, out there in the audience, they were probably heavily influenced by their friends and family, mentors. Uh, I personally grew up in a very military family. Both of my, I had a grandfather that was a Marine, a grandfather that was in the Army uh, during World War II, a great uncle that was a paratrooper in World War II, and my own father was an Air Force officer. So I saw merits in all the services, and uh, you know, ultimately, I decided that I liked supporting the soldier on the ground. I l enjoyed the variety. First of all, the history and tradition of the Army really drew me in. And then um, 
I like the variety of, of opportunities that the Army's presented. If you ever find yourself uh, bored or not finding what you're interested in the military, you're not looking hard enough. Keep looking because it's out there. There are so many opportunities. Thank you. Next question. Future soldier Felix Hernandez from Vista, California asks, what is your biggest piece of advice to graduating seniors interested in STEM, science, technology, engineer, math? Well, first of all, we have a, the most technologically advanced military that we've, uh, we've ever known, and we need STEM background uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, about a third of military occupational specialties in the Army right now require STEM backgrounds or are affiliated uh, with STEM backgrounds, and, th and that's critical. But I would also, for anybody pursuing studies in STEM, I would tell you what I've told my own children, which is do it because you love it or it's on the pathway, the necessary pathway to get where you will love. And that's most important because you've got to love what you're doing. Then I would tell you uh, do the hard stuff first. If you have multiple academic interests, I would, and you have a STEM interest, move that first because right now your mind is best prepared for those, uh, uh, for t tackling subjects like that. You're closest to your education, so move that to the front of the line and do that first. And then finally, I wouldn't uh, ever advise anyone to pursue STEM at the expense of being well rounded. We need you to be well rounded as well as technical, so continue to pursue history, art, humanities, and foreign language because a well-rounded person is as valuable as a technically adept person. Thank you. Another question for you. Future soldier Matthew Coffey from Fort Walton Beach, Florida asks, what is the most surprising thing about being in space that you've learned? Well, I would say that it was surprising that you know when you when you see uh, our social media and stuff you see that where it always looks like we're having a good time and that is true we are often having a good time but it's also very difficult there have been times where it has been very stressful and it, it, things have been difficult I miss my family and all those things are uh, you know that's the reality of just like a military deployment when you're separated from uh, from your loved ones that adds stress and that can be difficult but at the end, there's a reunion, and, and it'll all be worth it. One other question for you. Future soldier Caitlin McMullins from Newark, Ohio asks, what was, if any, the biggest setback you've experienced during your entire career, and how did it shape you to be the person you are today? Well, I could tell you about something fairly uh, recent. When I was selected as an astronaut, I got an injury that required surgery and set me back in my training by multiple months. And a mentor of mine, a uh, retired Army Colonel, Pat Forrester, who is now the chief of the astronaut office, advised me. He said, look at the big picture. In the grand scheme of things, a couple months setback is not going to be that big of a deal in the long run. And that is something that I've carried with me that when you take a step back and you look at the very big picture, little setbacks don't have to be a big deal. Just move on and improve as a result of them. Good, thank you. Another question for you. Future soldier Shelby Young from Sarasota Military Academy in Sarasota, Florida asks, how did your Army training prepare you for life on the space station? Well, the Army provi uh, prides itself in tough but realistic training, and I've been training in the Army uh, for as long as I've been in it, and those experiences hardened me. They gave me the grit that I needed when I experienced tough training as an astronaut. We've had tough training as part of our training to be up here on the space station, but everything that I did in the military prepared me for this moment. Okay. One other question for you. Future soldier Brianna Hakila from Eugene, Oregon asks, what led to your decision to become an astronaut? Well, I, I often say that I made my decisions in this order, uh, order. I was a soldier, and then I became a physician, and then I became an astronaut. 
uh, because the most important thing to me was I wanted to serve my country as a soldier, and then I served my patients as a physician, and then now I'm serving humanity, the ISS program, and the entire planet as part of the International Space Station program as an astronaut representing NASA here. Okay, a fun question here for you. Future soldier Austin Butts from Newark, Ohio asks, what's the best way to describe the feeling of zero gravity? And what types of studies do you do while you're there in space? Well, the uh, first time I act, uh, actually experienced microgravity was on a parabolic uh, airplane, but the first time I, sus I experienced sustained weightlessness was when I launched back in July. And then the moment that our rocket engine cut off and we feel microgravity permanently, and I haven't, you know, I haven't felt gravity since July 20th, that moment instant, I would, I would have felt like, if, if somebody had not told me, I would have been convinced I was hanging upside down in, my, in, in the straps in my seat. I was just suspended there. I felt like I was upside down. And I had that sensation for the first couple of days of just feeling a little bit disoriented all the time. But the, the uh, body is extremely uh, adaptable. And within a couple of days, certainly within a couple of weeks, it all starts to feel very normal. And this just feels very natural to me now. Okay. Uh, future soldier Bradley Everhart from the Winston-Salem State University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina asks, what's the biggest thing you've learned during your career about leadership? By far, putting others before yourself, selfless service. If you apply that principle to your leadership, I guarantee you will be successful. It has been a true honor and a pleasure to spend this time with you on behalf of the thousand uh, future soldiers and service members at the 150 locations. Thank you for your comments today. We've run out of time, and I'll turn it over to you, sir, for closing comments. You, sir, for closing comments. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Uh, all of you have started an exciting journey that begins today, and I am so proud of you and your decision to serve and humbled to be able to share this experience with you. This will certainly be one of the greatest memories of my time here, nine months on the space station. This was going to be at the very right at the top and probably for my entire career. Uh, just really, really was fantastic to be with you. Thank you to everyone who participated today and made it all possible. NASA, Space Center Houston, U.S. Army Recruiting Command, and Army Space and Missile Defense Command. I'd like to give a quick shout out to some of the other participating locations across the country, like Hop Hog High School in Hop Hog, New York, Antelope Valley High School in Lancaster, California. and Clarksville High School in Clarksville, Tennessee. And I just have a couple more things to show you. Thank you all. Station, this is Houston ACR. Now we got our concludes our event as we count down to 20 continuous years of humans living and working on the International Space Station. Thank you. Thank you to all the participants from the U.S. Army Recruiting Command. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>